Let's welcome our first speaker from Plug and Play, our marquee sponsor. Wade founded the energy and sustainability practice at Plug and Play, the largest corporate innovation center and active early stage investor. He works with entrepreneurs, corporate innovation leaders, and investors, focusing on the energy industry value chain. Wade has a master's degree in chemi chemical engineering and petroleum and natural gas engineering. He previously worked in solar, published scientific articles, and led business development in a startup. His passion is at the intersection of technology and business. Please welcome Wade Bitaraf. Thank you. Good morning. Happy Saturday. First of all, thank you for Women in Clean Tech and Sustainability for allowing us to host this event here at Plug and Play. It's a pleasure to have you all here. Thank you, Lisa Ann, for your leadership. Um, I just saw when you were raising your hands how many people are here for the first time and how many people are here from far distance. Um, maybe just one last time, a uh, quick raise of hands, how many people are here at Plug and Play for the first time? All right, so almost everyone. So uh, with that, I wanted to give you a brief introduction, a little quick dive into Plug and Play. What is Plug and Play all about? A little history of Plug and Play, where we are today, and what's our mission as it relates to clean tech and sustainability. Um, the picture that you see here is uh, back in the late 90s, our CEO and founder from Iran. Uh, after the revolution, their assets got nationalized and they moved to America. Very traditional businessmen um, from rug business to commercial real estate to plastic business. And in one of their buildings next to University, uh, next to Stanford at University Avenue, uh, they happened to uh, have uh, the first founders of Google uh, in their building as tenants. Founders of PayPal, founders of Logitech, founders of Danger, companies that were very small at the time and they didn't have a balance sheet to show how much uh, revenue they're making. So they negotiated a deal uh, to let them stay for two years and then put the money into the company as equity and it turned out to be wi wildly successful. And that was really uh, the inception of Plug and Play's tech business. Uh, fast forward today, so they kept investing in startups and um, grow, the, grow the company to uh, up to 2006, they moved to this building. This is a uh, former uh, headquarter of Philips Semiconductor, about 180,000 square, uh, square feet building. Um, and they, they wanted to fill it up with startups and try to find investment opportunities as they did before. But quickly they realized that they ran out of deal flows and wanted to change the model. Uh, so it was the idea of WeWork before WeWork was WeWork, basically. Today we have about 450 companies here in this building at any given time. Um, what we do first and foremost is we invest in early stage startups out of the private family office, deploying around $20 million a year into 200 deals. So one of the more active early stage investors uh, in seed and pre-seed stage startups around the world. Secondarily, uh, before we go to the next slide, we run accelerator programs, uh, about uh, 60 locations around the world in each location. We have several practices in each practice. We run two accelerator programs where we collectively select a few startups and help them grow and find uh, business opportunities. And then lastly, we do a corporate innovation practice where large corporations who seek technology needs come to plug and play and plug and play finds the startups that can ma match their criteria. And uh, we do it in a corporate innovation consulting way. So it's a membership organization. So here's a quick uh, look at where we are today. Um, this last year was uh, incredibly uh, amazing, where we launched two offices in Florida, two offices in Texas, two offices in, in Domain, Iowa, in Topeka, Kansas, in Detroit, in Phoenix, Arizona, Northwest Arkansas. And this, this movement was all because of um, the announcements of the government in IRA and some of the other government-funded bodies. So we're incredibly excited about the growth. Um, last year, Plug and Play, in terms of the volume, invested in the highest number of startups. These are small checks into early stage seed and pre-seed companies, but very active. In 2021, we saw a massive spike in the number of deals and deal valuations, but 2022 and 2023 were the years that we saw the correction of the market and the slowdown in deal valuations. Um, climate tech was down, uh, climate tech funding was down by 30%, but the volumes uh, tapered, so it, it remained almost the same. Um, these companies that you can see are uh, some of the plug-and-play portfolio companies that are fighting climate change from uh, medium-duty, fully autonomous, fully electric truck, trucking company, Einride, carbon capture, sequestration, 
uh, from direct, uh, direct air carbon capture, heirloom, Silvera in the secondary carbon markets, uh, circular that allows automotive companies to find out what is the carbon footprint of every component of the car that they put in from the raw, the mining of the raw material until the car, which is great for scope three carbon emission tracking, and Sapient, which is a um, startup, it's a plug load, um, plug load energy management startup that enables large commercial and industrial buildings to reduce their energy footprint by 30%. This is a quick snapshot of some of the other portfolio companies of plug and play that are uh, tackling climate change and they're doing uh, very well in different areas from automotive to building and construction um, as well as uh, industrials and manufacturing and energy sector. So many of folks ask about what are your accelerated programs. So these are programs that are completely free and no equity required for startups. So anyone from their early stage to later stage, they can come participate and if they get selected collectively by sponsors into the program and hopefully land and engage uh, some of them as their clients. Along the way, we're observing which companies are gaining traction and we invest in the ones that are getting the cumulative positive feedback from, from our partners. This is a quick look at how this selection mechanism works. So imagine a number of these uh, corporations, they come to us with their specific needs. We collect their votes, and then we select about 10 to 20 startups that can address all of those challenges and check the marks. And then we have an event right here on this stage where uh, it's like a shark tank on steroids. The startups come up here, they pitch, and the corporate members, they, they cast their votes and select the companies. And during the course of the program, we engage these startups not only with their potential investors and corporate corporate partners, but also experts like as your, uh, such as yourself, um, like VCs, mentors, advisors. We do a lot of workshops. We bring them around the table. Uh, we help them with hiring, with PR, legal, accounting, marketing, a lot of things that they need in early stage of their companies. So hopefully that they can uh, get ready to go to market faster and sooner than anywhere else in the world. So. Um, I've been with the firm for about seven and a half years. Uh, it's been a privilege to also know WCS and, and be an advocate for them and, and be able to collaborate with them in the past uh, seven, eight years. In the program of, of Plug and Play, we've looked at around 5,000 companies and uh, we narrowed down to about 200 startups over the course of uh, seven years, so 14 programs that we ran. And uh, we were able to help startups raise additional funding and create jobs and attract foreign direct investment. And, and of course, we invested in some of them that are doing really well. So Plug and Play right now is around 75,000 startups that in our database, in our centralized database. Uh, these startups are not necessarily our portfolio companies because oftentimes the, the corporations who come and ask for startups, they're interested in later stages startups. So these are some of the notable uh, energy and climate tech companies that we were able to bring to our programs without even being an investor, help them connect with large corporates and, and build um, strategic partnerships for them. I'm sure many of these names uh, ring a bell to you depending on where, uh, where you're at. So this is a, a little deeper dive into some of the specific focus areas as it relates to uh, clean tech and sustainability topics. Uh, within these four verticals, we're looking at around 85% of our global carbon emissions. Plug and Play has around 20 other industry-specific verticals. Um, so besides energy, transportation, industries and built environment, there are practices focusing on food, agriculture, materials, plastic sustainability, fashion, and a number of other sectors that, um, that contribute to our global emissions. So corporate innovation, uh, which is where I spend about 80% of my time, um, we have uh, around 550 large corporations that come here all the time. Uh, it's a membership organization, so they pay us an annual fee and we make about $130 million a year in, in just these membership fees. Uh, in each of these practices, there are groupings of large corporations that are sectored off and they're, as an industry, looking for technologies that they can uh, disrupt their business. 
So I started our energy practice back in the 27, summer of 2017 is when we launched our program. And we work very closely with some of these other adjacent verticals. So if you're an investor, if you're a startup founder, or if you're a corporate innovator, and you like to participate, we're always looking to grow our community. Um, we have offices around the world, uh, not yet in India, but everywhere else that everybody raised their hands. So when you go back home and you like to participate at one of these programs, it's a, it's a very strong community and we're always looking to grow them. Please uh, reach out to any of us or myself and we're happy to um, engage with you. So here's a quick uh, look at some of these industry stakeholders. In our energy practice, as you can see, we're looking at large electric utilities from the upstream to downstream of the business, power generation, transmission distribution, uh, automotive uh, suppliers, OEMs, manufacturers, tier one and tier two suppliers in the transportation sector, um, and then built environment, some of the big real estate developers, construction companies, property owners, property managers, anybody who's looking to now tap into this startup ecosystem wants to come out and, and engage in some of these activities. All right, so I'll just touch a few points about this. This is um, really the backbone of some of the activities that we do. Privately, each of these corporations, they come uh, like four to six times a year and they ask some of the specific use cases they want to build with startups. And then we set up a private meeting where they meet with four or five companies that uh, can uh, address their exact pain points and challenges. And we hope that when we facilitate these introductions, it turns into a meaningful engagement where these startups can either land a pilot project or proof of concept if, if they're in early stage or talk about commercialization, licensing, acquisition, or, or other deals if they're later stage. Okay, um, we're running out of time. In fact, we already went over time. But once again, thank you so much for being here. I'm very excited uh, to hear from our other speakers. And uh, I'm going to go pass it over to Anandi. Thank you.